Welcome to the Fat Emperor Podcast. I'm your host, Ivor Cummins. Hello again, all. There's been some breaking news on the Swedish question, uh, so I thought I'd address that today. Very brief podcast. Again, going with published sources and no fringe stuff. So, interesting to look at the data and let's try and get a handle on the situation. So the breaking news, as it happens, New York Post and elsewhere, uh, World Health Organization lauds lockdown ignoring Sweden as a model for countries going forward. Now, they're not exactly saying that they were completely correct all along, but as the lockdown, which has been going on for a few weeks in other countries, has to end at some point, they're suggesting Sweden's model is the way to go, pretty much. So... You know, there's ambiguous language in the WHO announcement. Uh, but still, it's a pretty big move and maybe a surprise to many. So let's look at the Swedish question uh, in a little more detail because the data has moved on a lot over the last week or so. So I'm just going to give a bit of context first that this current issue, uh, the demographics, if you will. So here's Portugal data, which is one of the few countries where you can get good all-cause mortality data. And we can see 2020 here in the past few weeks versus 2019 in this case. You see a spike certainly in all-cause due to the issue in over 75s, but almost no spike below 75 years old and below 65, certainly nothing. So there are certainly people who are younger who are affected and there are many factors for that, but the vast majority are in the older demographic and people with comorbidities. So again, to give an example, Boston has very detailed data. And you can see here with, I think they had nearly 2000 deaths, but there's around 600 shown here as a sample. And the average age is 81. And you can see over 70 and over 80 is the vast majority, but some 60 to 69 and the odd one uh, from this sample at lower ages. Also in Boston, we've got 97.5% had uh, comorbidities or one or more pre-existing conditions. So again, very hard on people who have medical issues and who are older. So that's kind of the context. I'm going to show worldwide all-cause mortality data for a few countries, including Sweden now. And this one came from a very good site just sent to me, and it shows Z-scores. And basically, a statistical way of showing that the deaths in any given period are above expected. So the red dotted line is hard to see there, but that's kind of expected range. So UK we're showing here, obviously, as a very big spike hasn't even turned yet. Uh, we see Belgium here had very high rates and you can see the spike, but they've turned pretty strongly downwards now. So they're kind of moving through it like you might see in a kind of a flu season, a similar dynamic. We've got the Netherlands, similarly a high rate, and we'll see them again shortly. And you see the spike in all cause. We've got Sweden and certainly they have a higher rate than uh, many countries and they have a lower rate than others but you can see there that they've spiked significantly in all cause in the past uh, few weeks and you can also see that they appear to be turning the corner in all cause i'll just compare with denmark because that's the best compare for sweden demographically geographically right beside them and because they are considerably lower than sweden uh, you can see in their all cause that they barely reach the uh, the line there's barely a blip you also might notice that previous years there are significant blips in all cause too, obviously not as high as, as currently. Ireland is interesting because Ireland, as you'll see shortly, is similar to Sweden, but Ireland is not showing any increase in all cause mortality. I'm not sure why that is. A couple of countries are not really demonstrating that, even though they have high corona numbers. And it's possibly because Ireland is showing an average age of death in the 80s and a median age and a huge amount of coexisting conditions and a huge amount in care homes. So maybe because it's so concentrated, it's not really showing up in the overall demographics for the country. So back to the WHO lauding the lockdown ignoring Sweden as a model. So that's kind of interesting. So let's look at Sweden's most recent figures that I have. And we can see here, just picking Denmark as the Scandinavian or you know Nordic type compare, uh, Sweden is around two and a half times 
uh, the rate per million inhabitants. So it is it is much higher. It's around the same per million as Ireland. It's lower than the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, France, multiple other countries. But again, yeah, compared to Denmark, it's considerably higher there's no doubt and you could perhaps say they maybe should be higher because they have not put in restrictions nearly as severe so they're going to see their home higher and then over time maybe the area under the curve over the next six months may end up not too uh, different than other countries but but we shall see we shall see so here's the deaths per million people on a daily basis and as you can see it's very noisy uh, Sweden also has underreporting from weekend and catch up midweek so it bounces around but you can see again similar to a lot of other countries but uh, well above Denmark and bending the curve and this is a log scale and it just shows our country is actually succeeding in leveling off and turning a corner downwards so in fairness to Sweden there they're not doing too bad in this kind of dynamic you know the Netherlands have had longer they're coming down Denmark certainly did very well kind of isolated things I believe particularly their care homes uh, and other concentrated areas that are providing a lot of Sweden's problematic figures uh, they they did very well there but you can see uh, Ireland not quite turning the curve and the UK appears to be in France certainly so that's kind of that view of the situation so just a word on geographical and demographics. In fairness to Sweden, and this is a little more in their defense, uh, for a balanced view, again, there's no point in getting too worked up if we want to just look at data. So Sweden has 10 million people, but there's a lot of them concentrated down the lower parts of the country in this region. Denmark has 5 million. So these are a reasonably good compare and a lot of travel between them. And if Sweden got hit, in Stockholm which they did due to international travel and other stuff and if there was a spread uh, westwards you know it's a good compare pretty much Finland is very sparse and very isolated you know by water and you know it's kind of a different scene and Norway again not as good a compare as Denmark also Norway is increasing their figures recently because they were not counting care homes they're beginning to add those in now so yeah anyway just keep these demographics geographics in mind in fairness and looking a little closer at some data from a Swedish website I think it's a government website uh, we see quite strikingly the uh, first time I saw the actual figures out of 2604 deaths so far that's hundred percent of Sweden there's 1406 or 54 percent just in this tiny area and that's Stockholm so very hard hit in Stockholm in this very dense city and um, that needs to be kept in mind too it's, it's well over half of their total deaths the other thing is Sweden nursing homes large nursing homes make up a big part of the figures and another thing that's come up of late is that ethnic minorities are making up very large proportions of the figures again I'm not sure in Denmark the extent to which there are a lot of ethnic mi minorities in cities etc I don't have those figures but uh, that is a pattern being seen around the world may connect to vitamin D and to other challenges we don't know yet uh, but it's something to keep in mind too if that's a difference with Sweden a distinction if you will uh, that needs to be taken into account and I'll add here there's actually not a huge amount of deaths down in this a uh, fairly heavily populated area down here on the left it's kind of interesting there's you know 16 percent of the country's total but i guess the real message is there's a super concentration here in stockholm and that, that's probably the primary takeaway along with the fact that ethnic minorities there are are making up a lot of the figures and nursing homes and this is just showing an actual density of population and again you see this area on the left is reasonably dense but it's still not adding it's still not adding many uh, actual figures for deaths Stockholm is is streaking ahead uh, so just another thing perhaps in Sweden's defense there are a lot of stories going around that you might not get immune to this coronavirus and you might not have immunity and you will never get herd immunity and a lot of that talk uh, is pretty loose talk and uh, South Korea 
brought out a lot of the initial data looking at reinfections and reporting hundreds of re reinfections. But interestingly, just yesterday, a news item came out here in the Korea Herald, and the experts there are now saying that the false positives were a mistake that they were overwhelmingly, if not exclusively, dead virus fragments that can survive for months in cells that have a half-life of months. So they're pretty much writing off that evidence of reinfection significance. And you can see there they ruled out reactivation of COVID as a reason for relapses and said there was little to no possibility that reinfections would occur due to antibodies that patients develop. So they're being pretty clear on that. So that's that's really new news, I believe. So keep keep that in mind as well. And finally, I would say that an overwhelming reason for the lockdowns was to protect the hospital system to ensure that people got adequate care and no one was turned away. And that's absolutely crucial thing. And it was very highly stressed in the media five, six weeks ago, and appropriately so. Uh, but in terms of Sweden, again, in their defense, uh, they are actually falling off in their ICU uh, capacity requirements. So their loading is actually falling and they never got anywhere near the extra capacity that they created uh, in, in preparation for this challenge they knew we would all be facing. So they never got near using their capacity and they seem to be falling off. So this is probably testament to the fact that they've turned a corner and the death data may be lagging quite a bit. Uh, so we need to wait another couple of weeks and see how this transpires. It's certainly too late for them to change policy now. So, so we'll get to see how this transpires. And some of this data I'm showing you in the last few slides may be part of the reason the WHO is shifting its view very, very markedly. Uh, it may be that they are cognizant of this data and aware uh, of some of the numbers here that won't be really in the mainstream media. So I guess that's probably it. Just to give a balanced view of Sweden, we don't know what the outcome will be in the end. Uh, but this hopefully gives you a kind of a an overview of more factors in this scenario than might generally be stressed in, in most mainstream media. Uh, so hopefully that was helpful. And again, uh, we wish the very best to the Swedish government and their leadership team as they work through this difficult time and have taken this pretty brave road in a sense uh, to, um, to book the trend and actually go with their beliefs on how, how this uh, viral spread will eventually acquit itself. So we, we shall see. So last thing, as always, uh, extratimemovie.com. We have a great new movie out, put a lot of work into it over a year and a half, and it explains a hell of a lot around identifying and resolving stopping progression of and perhaps reversing heart disease so i'll say again as i've said before you know this current issue is challenging it will pass uh, it will pass with time and the number of deaths from heart disease insulin resistance syndrome metabolic syndrome many of the cancers uh, of modernity and so many more diseases alzheimer's are always going to be massively dominating the landscape of human suffering and death for the last decades and for the decades to come. So let's always keep a focus on, on the Pareto principle uh, also. So thanks a lot. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my subscribe button in the middle of the screen and go to extratimemovie.com to see our fascinating new documentary on stopping and reversing heart disease.